Let's now get to know the procedure type objects that may be defined in a Genexus knowledge base. This type of object enables us to define processes to access and navigate tables in the database for different purposes. For instance, we could need to navigate the records of a specific table that meets certain conditions and then update, for those records, a given attribute with a particular value. Or, we might need to navigate a specific table and then print all its data in a PDF report according to a given sorting order. Or, we could also need to define specific processes that we must solve, which include searches, calculations, database updates, and also with the requirement to print information. Let's start by defining a procedure to list all the tourist attractions that the travel agency has to offer in alphabetical order. So we create a new object of the procedure type and call it Attractions Report. Once the object has been created, we can see that Genexus takes us to a section called Source. Here we will write the commands and orders for the procedure to achieve the objective for which we created it. In our case, to print a list of tourist attractions. Let's now take a look at this other section called Layout. The layout is the place for us to design our data as we want to see it. It's made up of print blocks. Inside the print blocks, we will include what we want to show. We might want to show titles, lines, images, or even values of attributes or variables. We can see that the layout will automatically contain one print block. In this print block, we might want to include a title or the date, or we could add more print blocks to the section as we will now see. Let's now think how we want our list to look like. So, we go on to define it. And it could be something like this. With a title, columns, and all the tourist attractions in alphabetical order. Note that we want to show two fixed contents, the list title and the titles of columns underlined. And also, the information we want to show about the attractions, which will change from one line to the next because we want to show the data we have stored in our database. We could then define three print blocks. One where we'd include the list title, another one to show the titles of columns underlined, and the third print block where we'll display the tourist attraction data. So let's start defining all this. It is possible to use the print block we created when we created the procedure object. So, Inside it, we create the title and start by inserting a blue rectangle. To do this, we select Toolbox, then drag the rectangle control, and now we change its background color, so we look for the back color property, and select light blue. We adjust the size a little. And now, inside the rectangle, we include the text Attractions Report. To do this, we go to the toolbox and drag the text block control. And inside the text property, we type Attractions Report. We also change the font. select bold letters, and press OK. To call this print block, we will use a name representing what it shows. So we select the print block properties and edit its name property, defining its name as title. We will now create another print block to include in it the titles of columns underlined. To do so, we right-click on a specific print block and select the option Insert Print Block. 
This will insert a new print block below it. The order of print blocks in the layout is really not important because it will not necessarily be the same order in which they will be printed. We define when each block is to be printed in the code we will write in the procedure source. We will see this later on. We will call this new print block column titles. Inside this new print block, we will now insert a text block for each text we want to show as a column title. So from Toolbox, we drag the text block, and in its text property, we write ID, we add another text block. In whose text property, we add the text name. and another text block to show the text country. We place the controls in whatever position we want. End to end, we insert a line under the column titles. So we go back to the toolbox and drag a line control We drag from here and define the length desired What's left to do now is add the third print block we mentioned to show the data on tourist attractions So we insert a new print block and call it Attractions. Since the data is stored in attributes, we go to the toolbox again and select a control of attribute variable type. And we drag it under title ID and set it to show the attraction ID attribute. We can also insert attributes in a print block from the Insert Attribute option. In this chart, we may select several attributes at once. So we select Attraction Name, and then press Control, and Country Name. We click OK. And place the attributes below the titles. We now have the design of how we want the data to be displayed on the list. What we have to do now is to write the code necessary to obtain the information from the database and set the print blocks to be printed in the order desired. Let's go to the source option. The first thing we want to have printed is the report title. So we type print title. Since the instructions we write in the source will be executed from top to bottom, this will be the order that will be executed first. With this instruction, we are indicating that the content of the print block called title must be printed, meaning the title of the list. The print command must always be followed by the name of a print block defined in the layout. The next thing we want is to print the column titles so we have to set the order to print the column title's print block. So we press enter and write print column titles. We've indicated that the fixed part of the report with the report's title and the column titles be printed. But now we need to print the information about the attractions, which is stored in the database. To do this, we must access the physical table that stores the information, 
that is, the attraction table. The command that enables us to access a physical table is the for each command. We then write for each, and next to it we write attraction. But why do we write attraction next to for each? Because it is the name of the transaction whose associated physical table we want to navigate. And now, because we want to print, for each tourist attraction, the content of attributes, attraction ID, attraction name, and country name, we write the order to print the attraction's print block that contains such attributes. So we write print attractions and then close the for each command with the instruction end for. And it's done. So we've indicated to Genexus that it must navigate the attraction physical table. And since inside the for each, we invoked a print block that contains attributes from the attraction and country tables applying the extended table concept, for each navigated table, the country table will be accessed to obtain the name of the country where the attraction is located. Let's execute it to see the result. But first we must define certain properties we need for the list to be printed in PDF format. We go to the reports properties and in the main program property, we select true. Then in the call protocol property, we select HTTP. Lastly, we have to insert the output file rule in the rule section. So we select insert rule. and end by including the name of the list file, Attractions Report PDF, followed by the format we will use, that is, PDF. We save, and now we are ready to execute. So we right-click on the object, and select Run. And we see that the list has been created with the format we defined and all the tourist attractions we entered appear in the list, each with the name of its corresponding country. Let's now go back to Genexus. Here we called attraction as base transaction. And as we've said, it corresponds to the name of the transaction whose associated physical table we want to navigate. What would happen if the transaction had more than one level, like flight for example, and we wanted to navigate the physical table associated with the transaction's second level, meaning the flight seats? In that case, the syntax would be as follows. That is, the name of the transaction, dot, and next to the dot, the name of the level. So, the physical table that the for each will navigate, as well as other decisions made by Genexus, are shown in the procedures navigation list. This list is automatically created when the procedure is generated to be executed. In it, Genexus indicates how it accesses the information in the database. Let's see that in detail. We can see that next to where we read for each, we can also read attraction to indicate that it is the base table of the for each. It's also indicating that to sort the list of attractions, the attraction ID attribute has been used, which is the primary key of attraction. In addition, it has run through all the records in the table, meaning that it showed all attractions. And also, it indicates that the table it navigated was attraction, and it had to access country to retrieve information, because in our list, we show the name of the country. Let's now get back to the procedure source. Something we still had pending was that attraction should be listed in alphabetical order by name of attraction. We can do this by simply writing next to for each attraction the clause order attraction name.
Let's now execute the procedure so we can see it. Now we can see that tourist attractions are listed in alphabetical order by their name. Now we can take a look at something different and interesting. It's the fact that Genexus enables us to sort by the value of an attribute that is not in the attraction table, but rather in its extended table. Let's change the attribute that follows the order to country name. This attribute is not physically located in the base table of the for each, but it is in the extended table of the base table navigated. And so, we can sort by it. Let's now execute the procedure to see the outcome. We can see that now we get the attractions listed in alphabetical order by country name. Just as we have added the order optional clause to the for each, the syntax of the for each also allows us to add several other optional clauses and definitions, as we will see. For instance, what would be the case if the travel agency requests that we list only tourist attractions in France? Let's get back to Genexus to solve that. We will only add the for each command, a clause called where to filter, and show only the data that meets the desired condition. So, we go to the line following the for each and write where country ID equals 2, because we know that France's ID is 2. We could have also written where country name equals France. We save and execute the report once again. And indeed, only attractions located in France appear on the list. To end, we update the changes in GX Server.